Hey peeps, Tyler here with my May wrap up part one. I'm filming this on May 26th, so I'm pretty sure of what I'll finish in the last couple of days of May. And in the effort of not having super long videos, I'm putting it into two parts because I've read quite a bit this month. So, or at least for me anyway. And I go in chronological order. The first book I finished in May was Fifty Shades Freed by E.L. James. Sorry for the ring light glare. I did do a trilogy review for this on my blog. I will link it down below. It doesn't really go into spoilers. I don't think it goes into any spoilers. It's just an overall review of the trilogy. I gave all of them four and a half stars. Really enjoyed the trilogy. Found it a lot more complex with fleshing out than I initially thought before going into it because of all the stuff I'd heard. And I go on a slight mini rant in my review of people literally saying like quoting things I've seen again and again and again. People online quoting things from the trilogy that are never in the trilogy at all and people believe them. And just the way people act and the way I used to act so I was calling out my old self too. So basically like I know they're not perfect and it's an erotic romance. I'm not saying it's a masterpiece so that everybody has to read it because no it's an erotic romance it the BDSM is like so not the point of the trilogy I have not read Twilight because I've heard it started out as Twilight fan fiction so I don't know any of those connections but I freaking loved Anna Christian has a lot of childhood trauma which does not make the stuff he does okay. I'm not defending the stuff he does. But everything that as I was reading was like, okay, this needs to be addressed. This needs to be talked about was every single time. The most I could say or the worst I could say is occasionally I wish it was more fleshed out, but it was never ignored. And Anna is really, really strong. At one point she does leave Christian. That's in the first book. This is the last one. I read the first two last year. And I just couldn't help but imagine if Christian was a woman who had been through all the shit he'd been through without help in childhood, completely traumatized how people would react and I could just imagine everybody trying to run to like metaphorically hug her and defend her but because he's a man he should just man up is how people act which is also toxic and it's like I'm so confused and I didn't really want to go into this but apparently I don't know how to keep my mouth shut because I did go into, into the review which I'll link in the description but yeah and he does have a therapist that's in there and like I said the character development throughout all three books but especially in the last one was amazing for both of them and I loved how strong Anna was how she stood up for herself she didn't take Christian's bullshit and yeah Apparently I'm a Fifty Shades of Grey fan, and that's that. <laughs> I don't know why I had to say it that way, but I mean. So yeah, I gave it four and a half stars. Don't know what else to say. Check out the review in the description if you want to. Then the next book I finished in May was Felix Ever After by Kaysen Calendar. I also have a review 
on my blog for this, which I will link in the description. Felix felt like a real teenager. He feels like he's one marginalization too many because he is black, queer, and trans. I am disabled, queer, and trans, so which is obviously a little different. But I'm saying that because I know what it's like to feel like too much. Of course, there's still the queer and trans situation. It's apparently the first one-page traditionally published YA demi-boy representation. He doesn't start out knowing that he's a demi-boy. He starts out knowing he's a trans guy. And... feeling like that's not 100% correct and you get to see him figuring out that he's a demi-guy and it's literally on the page I am a demi-guy which I've mentioned in previous videos and I really loved that representation like I said he feels like a real teenager he makes mistakes he's flawed he learns there's also parental abandonment from his mom, he lives with his dad. And because of all that feeling like he's one marginalization too many, the parental abandonment, he feels like he's not worthy of love and respect. He learns that he is. So it's hard hitting and raw, but also honest and it does it is hopeful. And I just loved it so very much. I gave it a full five stars. I said I, my review probably goes into more. I'll leave that in the description if you want to check it out. And then I read the Backstagers um, single issues 5, 6, 7, and 8 because that's what they had on Comixology Unlimited. 5, 6, 7, and 8 also make up volume 2. So. by James Tinian sorry the fourth and Ryan Sig probably butchered both those last names sorry about that issue five I gave four stars six seven and eight I gave five stars the backstagers is a comic with queer guys in theater. I don't think they're all queer, but several of them are. And they're in a theater school. There's a trans guy, there's some MM relationships. And it has supernatural magic and chaos. So it's just fun. There's healthy male relationships, guys having healthy emotions and just it's a ball of fun a ball of queer fun and there is like I said some supernatural magic stuff going on as well backstage because as the name implies they're the backstagers the ones who do the lights and all that in the theater and it's just fun also I wanted to mention Strawberry Seafoam which is a webcomic I'll leave a link to that in the description as well because you can read that online for free. It's still ongoing. It's on uh, webtoons.com. Strawberry Seafoam is this cute mermaid story. They have magic and there's this evil thing. I don't quite know what to call it. Ink. Yeah, evil ink. And it's just kind of fun and cute mermaids like I said it's still ongoing it is on Goodreads though so I've added it to my currently reading but obviously I don't know when it's gonna be finished so it's gonna be there for I don't know how long and I'm still not quite caught up but hopefully I will be soon and I'm close I'm like 20 approximately issues or episodes behind Then I read Castaways by Brian Keane.
this is a pretty basic, I guess, horror story. It was written, as the introduction points out, as a uh, tribute to Richard Lehman, who passed away, if I remember correctly, in 2010. I'm not sure. But it was written in, like, memory of him, which you can see if you, like, have read any of Richard Lehman, which I've only read one book, which was The Cellar, which I liked. I gave it three stars. And, um, this is kind of like the show Survivor, which I've never actually seen, I just know of. They came to the lush, deserted island to compete on a popular reality TV show. Each one hoped to be the last to leave. Now they're just hoping to stay alive. It seems the island isn't deserted after all. Contestants and crew members are disappearing, but they aren't being eliminated by the game. They're being taken by the monstrous half-human creatures that live in the jungle. The men will be slaughtered. The women will be kept alive as captives. Night is falling. The creatures are coming and rescue is so far away. So I really enjoyed this. I gave it what the 4.25 stars. I loved kind of like how it talked a little bit about how the humans were the ones invading the island. They didn't know the creatures were there, but they were the invasive species, so to speak. But it's mostly just a basic horror novel. There's deaths, obviously. And as the synopsis does imply, there's rape. So if that's a trigger warning. Though I will say in the um, afterward, I did like how Brian King mentions he doesn't actually like using that in his books. I forget how he mentioned it, but I really did appreciate that. Uh, it says, I'm also not a big fan of using rape to convey a sense of horror in, the, in a novel. That's a tired trope, and many times instead of experiencing horror, the reader is left with nothing but literary misogyny. I debated it for a while. But to have not used rape here would have been a cheat. It would have lessened the realism of the book. Let's be honest. Well, if I say more of it, it'll give away spoilers. But I do see what he said there. Like I said, there's a little bit more there, but I don't want to spoil it. So that is mentioned in the afterword. And... It was mostly just fun brain shitty off horror thing. If that makes any sense. And then the next book I attempted and DNF'd was The Drowning Girl by Caitlin R. Kiernan. I literally struggled to finish the first chapter. And said to hell with it. Which I feel bad about, but it's Indiana Morgan Phelps, imp to her friends, is schizophrenic. She can no longer trust her own mind because she is convinced that her memories have somehow betrayed her, forcing her to question her very identity. Struggling with her perception of reality, m imp must uncover the truth about an encounter with a vicious siren or a helpless wolf that came to her as a feral girl. Or neither of these things, but something far, far stranger. Like I said, I only read the first chapter, so that's all I can talk about. Though I've heard from others that it stays the same throughout. And it, from others who also didn't care for it, it didn't get any better, apparently. It's very all over the place and rambly. Which, I suppose, actually does make sense. But it was just driving me up a wall. And I feel bad because the main character has schizophrenia, which is something, along with other mental health issues, that I would like to learn more about. I have an ex-boyfriend who has schizophrenia. He is not the one 
that was abusive, because I know I've also talked about an ex that was abusive. A different person. And we lived together for a while. Obviously living with somebody with schizophrenia is still not going to tell you what it's like to have it. To understand that, you're going to have to have it. And... So, like, I really wanted to like this story, but I could not handle all the rambling and going off. I literally said to the book, at least I think I said it out loud, get to the point! And for people who also felt the same way, apparently it just continues rambling the entire time and is just hella frustrating. So I'm gonna look up some other books. I, there's the Collected Schizophrenia's book that I want to check out, which is a non-fiction book. Which I think will be a lot better than this for me, personally. But I've also since realized in the past, like, year or two, it's a fairly new term that I have aphantasia. Which, upon learning that, was a thing that other people actually were being literal when they say they visualized something. Like, they're... I was always so confused when people said, reading a book is like a movie. I'm like, like a movie in your head. Like, what are you talking about? I thought they were just being overly literal. Apparently they were being literal. I don't get any of that. And I was also confused about people saying when they watched a movie after reading the book that the movie is based on. These characters look nothing like how I pictured them. I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't, I can't picture anything in my head. When I'm awake anyway, I do dream visually. Apparently many people with Fantasia do, but awake there's nothing. I don't have any of the senses because apparently people can also think when they're talking about music stuck in your head they actually hear it. I don't actually hear it. When I've said in the past I had music stuck in my head it was just like be thinking the words though I don't hear anything. So now knowing that other people did it's very difficult for me to try to figure out how to explain. But I'm like all five senses mind blind aphantasia. I don't know how else to put it. My whole rambling with that, I know I ramble, and here I am complaining about the book rambling, is now that I know that, it seems like that's the exact opposite of schizophrenia, from my understanding, and I really, really, really hate to say this, but with knowing that now I'm, like, they think 2% of people have aphantasia, I actually cannot figure out what the difference is between people without aphantasia visualizing and people with schizophrenia hallucinating. Because my ex did have hallucinations both visual and auditory. And I'm like, what is the difference? The way people describe their normal visualizations sounds exactly like a hallucination to me. I can't understand the difference. Because I have aphantasia, which is so very different. I know there must be a difference. Obviously, I'm not... I don't know how to say that. I, I understand there is obviously has to be a difference. I just can't understand what that is. Because they sound the same to me. So, I think that's why, like, me and that book of fiction doesn't get along. But hopefully a non-fiction book will be more up my alley. Be easier to understand because like I want to learn. But that book was just not working for me. So I, I left it unrated because I only read one chapter.
I apologize if I said anything wrong. I'm trying my best here and I'm sorry this video is so long. The last thing for this video that I finished was The Complete Peanuts Volume 1 by Charles M. Scholes. I apologize if I'm butchering any names. I gave it three stars. The Complete Peanuts Volume 1 is for the years 1950 to 1952. It's on Kindle Unlimited and Prime Rating and I think Comixology Unlimited as well. So I don't actually own it. And like who doesn't know who the Peanuts are? Snoopy, Charlie Brown. Because it's from the early 50s, like I said 1950 to 1952, there were some issues I had with it that I could understand where it came from. And because of the time it was written, and it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was actually funny in parts. Like I said, I gave it three stars. I might continue because there's 26 volumes at some point. I don't know. But yeah, I liked it enough. Especially considering when it was written. So, that is what I have for the first part of May. So, yes, what have you read in May? Have you read any of these? Let me know your thoughts down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Or hit the bell if you want to be notified when I post. And have a nice day. And of course, the obligatory thumbnail. Have a nice day.